Welcome back to another Seek as Beginner's Guide to Straps. Obviously, in the last few weeks, we've done a guide to knee supports and we've done a guide to belts. Today, we're going to talk about straps or pulling straps or deadlifting straps, whatever you want to call them. So we'll go first up for the people who use straps or who can affect their performance probably most or it's probably the most kind of, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, it's a great stretch. What's your stretch to those straps, though? Yeah. What's your best to those straps? Fuck That's off. the most backhanded compliment you yeah. can make. Think. So what we'll start with is kind of the options of straps we have. So yeah. we have what's known as so easy straps. So this is just your standard loop, yeah. uh, a sewn together loop. Uh, Iron Mind are the propagators of those. There will be some of the earliest, and in fairness to them, the most long lasting. Then we have the non-sewn straps. So that's just a length of material. Uh, nylon material or cotton. Nylon usually lasts a little bit later, better, longer. These Jesus. are a personal favorite of mine. But they, no, cotton is nicer to use sometimes, but it's uh, it doesn't last as long. Then we have for, this is just straps for everyone now. So we have the lasso strap, so which is attached yeah. to your wrist. Heated. One long piece of material, which you wrap around the bar several times. And finally, we have the figure of eight straps. Essentially, nobody watching this will ever use the figure of eight straps. No, uh, and they definitely shouldn't either. I think if you're looking for to put these into categories, you'll have an active, an active gripping strap. Uh, so that's something where your hand has to be around the strap to hold onto it, and then you have a a passive or a more passive gripping strap. So the first ones that will fall into that active group will be the easy so, so just a continuous loop strap and the just single length strap so these are ones commonly used by weightlifters they're used by everybody else as well but what it means is once i wrap the strap around the bar i have to hold on to that with a certain amount of grip strength to make sure i stay connected to the barbell the difference between that and the more passive styles will be like the lasso style so you have a loop around your wrist and you wrap it around the bar a load of times the thing is once i leave go of my hand with a lasso strap it might take half an hour or three episodes of the simpsons before that bar will fall out of my hands if i leave go of my hand with a, a figure of eight strap it doesn't make any difference i'm permanently attached to the barbell so there are obvious advantages to those but there are huge disadvantages if we start with our weightlifters for example and we move to the rest categories or powerlifters athletes uh crossfitters so if start with weightlifters it's kind of a an intricate thing you need to monitor closely but as a rule of thumb, almost certainly you would use something like the So Easy straps. Uh, so these are ones joined together, very short. Or we have the one long piece of material. Um, these would be kind of clock off straps as they're turned because he would have kind of, you know, he wasn't the, by far not the first person to use no. these decades before. But it's what most people would have them called or know what they are when you say clock off straps. So we have one joint piece of material or one loose piece of material. So you're active gripping like Derek uh, described them. When you use straps, basically is on... Weightlifters will use them on basically any of the lifts. So snatching, cleaning, pulls, deadlifts. Weightlifters use them on all these categories. Yeah. So we're talking about elite. So some kind of weightlifter will use them on everything. The When you use them on everything. So when you use them is very, very much dependent on your experience and your kind of um, your level of weightlifting you're at. So beginners, it's almost you should never, ever use straps within at least the first two years. Yeah. depending how young you are if you're younger use them you won't use them for longer than that but if you start weightlifting somewhere your late teens early 20s 20s whatever for a newer don't use weightlifting straps for the first year and a half to two years at least for your snatch and never for your clean obviously so for your snatch never ever use them no matter what power snatch maybe on hang snatches but even then it would be wise not to use them so you don't use them on full lifts from the floor ever so in these at least first two years so you can use them on your pulls if you want or your deadlifts on your snatch pulls for example but this is because you need to learn what it feels like to snatch without straps if you're a competitive athlete so it's very very important when you're learning the coordination and technique of lifts that you kind of develop that feel of the bar and for in particular the snatch grip is a very extreme angle and it can feel incredibly uncomfortable so it's very very important you get used to this and you get used to the discomfort of this especially when you're starting with anything as well you'll be learning what's known as a hook grip so a lot of people probably know what the hook grip is watching if they don't, it's just where your thumb goes under your fingers and it crushes them. And it's very, very uncomfortable for the first few years. Now, the problem with weightlifting, not only are you hook gripping, so in the deadlift it can be very uncomfortable, but you're trying to move weightlifting the barbell at speed. So it's even more uncomfortable. So it's very, very important that you don't develop any kind of, uh, you don't develop any daddy issues, any bad relationship with the hook grip on the snatch. So it's very important 
that you develop some grip strength. So there's a, you actually don't need a whole lot of grip strength for weightlifting, but it's very important that you develop a minimum amount of grip strength. And this will just become, this will come true just training without straps. You can do your pulls without them to focus on technique, which is fine, save your hands. But there is a certain technique that is developed with snatches. So you can actually loop the bar a little bit more in weightlifting when you use straps and you can pull a little bit faster than you otherwise would normally pull without straps. So it's very, very important you learn the truest sense of technique. Yeah, I think the last thing with the alterations of technique, if you're somebody who smashes the bear with their hips, using straps definitely doesn't help that. Yeah, I fancy uh, your breath there. <laughs> for other groups of athletes then, right? So we have real athletes, so people who play a sport or a field sport or track and field, whatever that is. We have crossfitters and we have powerlifters. So for the, the field athletes, you're going to use straps at different stages. So particularly when you're in an off-season block and you're doing a lot of training, so there's a lot of volume and time going through your hands, straps can be very good. So you're going to be doing things like RDLs, deadlifts, hanging from a bar, doing whether that might be like hanging leg raises, hanging knee raises, weighting leg ra weighted leg raises. All of these things, a strap can help because they take some of the loading out of our hands and allow us to apply the loading to our prime movers. So rather than my hands being my limiting factor, it might be my quad strength or my posterior chain strength in a deadlift. Yeah, so for those real athletes, when they're choosing a strap, a lot of the time they'll tend to just pick what's on myprotein.com or whatever bodybuilding website and they'll go for like the lasso style strap. I'd definitely be saying to stay away from those. So as we talked about earlier, those lasso style straps or the figure of eight straps, you're permanently connected to the barbell or kettlebell or whatever it is. And it's not ideal if you're in any way inexperienced with the lifts. So for a lot of field athletes, you might be really concentrating on gym work for three or four months of the year. And the rest of the time you're doing like maintenance work in the gym. So you mightn't have the requisite skill to want to be attached fully to a barbell. In this case, having something like the easy sew strap or the sew easy strap or the single length whereby once you leave go of a barbell, it will fall almost immediately from your hands. That's a very, very good thing. So take, for example, somebody who's doing a deadlift and they might be doing a, a variant whereby it's a deficit deadlift. If something goes wrong on the way up there and they need to bail out of the lift, so they might be lifting it and their knees will shoot back too quickly and they'll do something we might call a stripper pull where their ass is up in the air, their knees are back way too early and they now start to feel strain somewhere. So they might feel strain around the back of the shoulder or in the mid back. The easiest way for them to get out of that would be to drop the barbell. If they're using something like the easy so or a, a, an active gripping strap, they can just leave go and the weight will leave them and they'll no longer be under load. So that initial twinge, that is all it is. If I'm connected in some way to the barbell and I decide shit, something's gone wrong here, or I feel a pop or a click, and I need to leave go of the bar. If it's with the figure of eight straps, I have to follow that barbell down to the floor, and then that pop or a click or a twinge could now suddenly become an injury because I have to support that load for longer. So in those two scenarios, if you compare like the weightlifters or our real athletes, for weightlifters, it's more often than not, it's just a crutch if you're a competitive weightlifter. But then, for example, for our real athletes, it's freedom to emphasize yeah. and overwork that particular thing you want so you remove your hands as a crutch and you eliminate them as being an issue and then you can overwork your back or your leg whatever it is you're particularly doing your hamstrings whatever movement it is so it's very very important to see that you know they're positive and negatives for different groups for our weightlifters very very often it's just a crutch if you're a competitive weightlifter yeah so, so moving on then to our next group which would be crossfitters this is one of the groups where basically a scenario you should never be using straps no matter what it is so for if you're we're talking about now is our kind of competitive crossfitters or people are looking to get very good at crossfitters so you're not doing crossfit to uh, improve you know uh, your general health like you're looking to be as good as crossfit as you can possibly be as yeah. an athlete so in this scenario you should predict almost certainly never use straps for anything so there's no justification to use them for the olympic lifts because you're probably not doing enough olympic lifts to justify saving your hands or doing extra volume with straps you should almost certainly be practicing them without straps because that's what will happen in competition. You won't be able to use them. Uh, crossfitters oftentimes have very um, a lot of grippy movements, as crossfitters call them. So if you're doing a lot of kettlebell swings, you're doing like toes to bar in a similar workout, then you might be doing deadlifts, or you could be doing Olympic lifts on top of that. So any extra opportunity to train the endurance of your forearms and your grip muscles is very, very important. And it's almost certainly um, 
not worth the payoff if you were to use straps to eliminate the script training to maybe get a couple more kilos in the snatch or make it feel a little bit easier. But it's definitely not worth it to lose that extra grip training, which is something you need to practice. And it's something you need to get used to very fast, you know? Yeah. The caveat for CrossFitters is the loading going through their hands is significant all the time. So they might say, oh, straps save my hands during a deadlift. Uh, what I would be saying in those cases, is like if you're doing loads of kipping movements on a bar, you should be getting a gymnastics grip rather than being getting get pull straps. And you can just use those gymnastics grips where needed. They won't give you the same amount of help. Like that's the ultimate thing of like a passive thing. If you leave go of a bear with gymnastics grips on, they're just, it's gone. Uh, so that is the one, that's the counter argument for CrossFitters is that, oh, their hands get so beaten up. That's not really an excuse because the sport is a thing of hands getting beaten up and you need to get that level of adaptation happening. I think, yeah, it's almost certainly, it's it will almost certainly become a crush if you're doing CrossFit and you start using straps, even for yeah. your bodybuilding, you know, if you're doing double rows or your deadlifts, any of that kind of stuff, it'll definitely end up being a crutch for you in your competitive CrossFit career. So you're much better off training without them unless you have an absolute massive hole in your hand or something and you need to do some <laughs> stuff. But other than that, it's definitely something you should use incredibly sparingly. I think the last point probably on CrossFitters and, and the thing people don't understand is your hands go through adaptation the same way your quads and your biceps and your back does. So somebody who lifts a lot of weight um, or presses a lot of weight, they'll get adaptation in their hands. So their fingers will get thicker. You'll get better calluses is probably the thing people always think of. But then you'll also get forearm definition, forearm muscular hypertrophy, and all these things give you better grip and straps take that away. So then our last group is powerlifters. Powerlifters are kind of a funny one. They're sim- closer to weightlifters where straps could be very, very useful. But as cross or powerlifters don't use straps in competition, so if you're a par- competitive powerlifter again, you will possibly swim into the realm of where straps could become a crutch for you. So if you're doing heavy deadlifts, for example, a lot of times people miss deadlifts because their grip is an issue in the lockout, for example. So you want to take a lot of opportunities to do your sets, you know, where you can train your grip. The alternative argument then for powerlifters, though, is if you're doing high rep sets, so you want to do sets of 10, very likely it is this weight isn't heavy enough to challenge your grip in the maximal sense of things, but it is worth you getting those extra reps with your straps. However, you then hitting a PB with straps may add, for example, a psychological factor where you know you did it but it's with straps and you go to competition, you may have an issue. And the problem with powerlifting, for example, as well, is that that PB might be 10, 20 kilos above what you're able to do without straps. So the, the deficit looks very large. So you might have like 20 kilos is an awful lot to compare your strapped deadlift, for example, without your strapped deadlift. So it's an issue that you need to be very, very careful with. Likelihood, when you're powerlifting, you should probably never max with your straps on. If you are using straps, for example, in your powerlifting, so you're working up to your, let's say you've like four by 12 or something in deadlifts to do, you work up to your sets without using straps. So you practice your hook grip or whatever it is. Maybe you do the first set without straps and then you do the remainders with them so you get as much time without straps as you can but then you use them kind of surgically and then for example then in like your assistance exercise if your back is very very weak for example you want to do incredibly heavy dumbbell rows you could probably justify using dumbbells in that scenario yeah i think the the last thing i'd say on powerlifting is like do a bit of a needs analysis on yourself if you're somebody who has small hands or if you're somebody who's lost maximal deadlifts because of grip strength then probably stay away from the straps or at least keep the straps much, much further away from competition. If you're somebody who's like blessed with large hands or you've never failed a maximal deadlift because your grip, because your back might be weak or your quads might be weak or whatever that is, then you could probably keep straps in there a good bit longer or a good bit closer to competition. So it is very much an individual thing. Like the ultimate example of somebody whose deadlift mightn't be great is we had Broderick on the podcast last week and he said his deadlift without straps was 100 pounds lighter than his deadlift with straps and he has very short hands so the last thing then is and you might be thinking it already there's other kinds of straps that we mightn't have mentioned so the kind of strap that you'll see uh that has a loop here it's like an easy so strap except it has an elongated tail straps like these are the zkc straps the weightlifting house straps the lu zhao zhong straps so you'll see Gurf uses them a lot. These are essentially falling into the first group of an active gripping strap. So it's very like the Iron Mind So Easy strap. You just put it over your wrist, you wrap it around once or twice, and then you hold onto it, and it will 
fall from your hand as quickly as you leave go of the strap. I think these can be very, very valuable. And if you want to look at the kind of pros and cons of each one, go to our strap review video and we go in depth on many of the kind of most popular of this version. Uh, if it was me, I'm going so easy every day. So just in closing, just to you know, be very aware of what you're using your straps for, be smart with them. It could be very easy to get, fall into a rhythm of using your straps an awful lot and then kind of not noticing the factor where it's creeping up on you that you are using them as a crutch rather than as an assistance tool for your training. Especially your weightlifters power powerlifters, big, that's a big issue there for some people where they just use it too frequently. Weightlifters in particular, it can make a big difference realistically for weightlifters if your snatch for example from the floor is bigger than your snatch without straps if it's beyond you know if it's something beyond like three two or three kilos then you probably have an issue there and need to look at it one or two kilos or even within three kilos for example can make a difference you know depending on the day depending on how good you are um you'll know yourself like if you hit that couple of two or three kilos under your max with straps then you'll know that realistically it's probably not the straps but if you're getting somewhere beyond five kilos or more realistically you're looking at you probably have an issue there the straps are have become a crutch for you and they're not an assistance for you so then you need to be very very cautious of that and then you need to be realistic with yourself and eliminate those straps for a time being until it catches up or you figure out what the issue is uh so we hope you enjoy this i think this is the last of them though i don't think we're going to do wrist straps are we no i don't think so so i think that's kind of the last that's a big tree you know knee sleeves belts and straps for uh the beginners got to equipment there's not a whole lot to say for wrist straps for example people will just wear those if they like them or not there's yeah. a, lot of, a whole lot of crutches with them Thanks, guys.